So there was a request from uh, Decalthon, so I will accept that challenge. And I'm playing with black pieces here. But I'm not sure if my opponent's still online. Yeah, he or she is. Okay. Let's continue with the e5. It worked just well in the first game. Let's see what happens here. So probably Vienna. After bishop c4, the Vienna attack. All right. All right. Okay. The Vienna. d3. So the idea behind the Vienna attack is pretty straightforward. White is developing the pieces the way uh, keeping f4 option open. So the knight is still on g1. Um, and the idea behind f4 is to open the f file and to support the bishop in attacking f7 potentially. Okay, that's the strategy here. And as far as I remember, knight a5 is a move here. One of the lines that looks pretty uh, logical since white has played d3, now the bishop has no way to escape the attack from the knight, which means we have a good chance to get rid of the bishop immediately. One of the key pieces here, potentially just the most important one, attacking our f7. And I'm not sure that knight d5 is a well idea. So what's going on to e4? If we take there, queen goes to e2, obviously, attacking the knight and then potentially just uh, taking on e5. So I'm not sure. I don't want to calculate that one. I will just play another natural move, c6, attacking the knight. Um, and if knight goes back to c3, then white just uh, wasted some tempi. Well, I'm doing nothing bad here, right? C6 is just very natural to control D5 square. Hi, Andre, can you accept my challenge next? Sure, I will. As far as I understand, the uh, nickname is the same pretty much, right? Here on only chess. Here I mean on, on chat. So knight is on E3 now. E file is closed, right? So now nothing stops me from just taking on E4, I believe. Let's do it. I didn't take on E4 on the previous move only because of potential Queen E2. Now, since the knight is on E3, there is no Queen E2, no danger hands, and yeah, position feels very good. Pair of bishops, absolutely no problems with the development. I guess we're doing very well. Extra pawn now. In addition to that, right? D6, well, it was possible to play bishop to c5 or something, but this is one of the positions uh, when it's no longer that important what you play <laughs> because it's absolutely winning. Um, and um, D6 is just not the worst continuation here. I cover e5, I unleash my bishop. That was the idea behind d6 mainly, just to grab that knight. And um, yeah, protect e5, stuff like that. So now queen h4, I guess, is good. Taking another important pawn. And our bishop on h3 is not that badly placed, right? Everything is logical. Yeah, I guess it's just lost for, for white already. Now our task is to develop the bishop, right? We can do it in various ways, um, including some tactical stuff like d5 followed by bishop c5. But you know what? Uh, in positions like this, when we already have a tremendous advantage, I don't see any reason to calculate anything. And... I don't see the reason in taking risks, right? So why would we sacrifice anything? Let's just castle and play d5 without sacrificing anything, without calculation. Although, you know, it's probably faster 
to play d5, but castling is also not a bad idea, right? It's a pretty logical move. Now we can play d5 without problems. Nothing is being sacrificed. It's still very annoying for white. Still very good for black. All right? Just simple practical consideration. Do we really need it, right? I mean, that d5 with potential sacrifice. <sighs> My coffee is getting cold. I'm too focused on, 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 on the game. And outside is getting cold with each and every day. So winter is here. CD5, CD5. Yeah. What's interesting, black has no weaknesses here whatsoever. That is what makes white's position absolutely lost. We can play bishop c5, we can play d4, we can combine different things here. I will just play... Should we play bishop to c5? Let's have a look. Um, if we play bishop c5, white castles, most likely, and we play d4 after it, uh, using the fact that queen on e2 is not protected anymore. Uh, well, black may fall into that trick, so queen may jump to c4. Although it's not a trick. We can just come back with a queen to c6 in that case, and we're doing well. So I'm calculating the line bishop c5, castling, d4, queen c4, queen c6. Looks good. Let's do that. So it's a development after all. It's a development. d4. I think queen c4 is uh, strictly the only move now. Otherwise, we just win a piece, right? So queen to c4 has to be played. In which case, the bishop is attacked and the pawn is pinned. All right, so white found something else. Bishop to a5. That's very bad, so... Let's just take that knight, simplify the things a bit. Fortunately, the rook on d8 is protected with another rook. Which means, at the end, we are getting two minor pieces, two best bishops, with a couple of pawns against the rook. And since our pawn is only two moves before promotion, I think it's absolutely winning for black. And probably it's the easiest way to convert the advantage here. Although I believe after bishop a5 we could have played something else, like b6 or rook somewhere maybe even to d7 or d6 doesn't matter maybe even d5 was possible because you know the knight on e3 was pinned the queen on e2 was not protected and white is not even taking my rook on uh, a8 this is pretty weird stuff all right let's keep going then e2 attacking the rook intending bishop to e3 there are things, so maybe we'll just play it now. Do we need it though? I don't think so. Let's just take on d8. Now, bishop to f1 is the easiest, I think. Or maybe bishop g4 is a bit cleaner. I don't know. It's the position in which it's not very important, I think. Let's take there. Let's go f5. Let's go f4. Bishop e3 wins the rook. Bishop a3 checkmates black. So, oh, sorry, white. So, I would prefer that one. Okay, it's faster just faster so there is literally nothing to comment uh actually white made a lot of mistakes uh in the beginning of the game so first of all um i don't think that knight e5 is a move here uh the main line goes either bishop b3 or just keep on developing the pieces as far as i remember there are different ways to do that so queen f3 is a possibility knight to e2 so in general the structure which 
arises after uh, knight takes c4 and d takes c4 is quite okay for white because white indeed controls a lot in the center and even the fact that black has pair of bishops is not that important because it's hard for black to open the position further to make bishops really strong so white is not really against it but uh, to get a pawn structure uh, white needs um, you know just to wait uh, and uh, it would be good to make something uh, useful right while waiting and a developing move would be a good idea knight to d5 is not a developing move because the knight was already developed and um, yeah after knight to c4 it becomes an object of attack so c6 is something that i would have played anyway um, and here i would have just stepped back with the knight just keeping the pawn on e4 protected because taking on f6 is probably uh, helping black uh, to you know develop the pieces and to get some active position um, in the future. Knight e3 is just a mistake because I take the pawn. Now I'm just a pawn up with no visible compensation and the rest is just a conversion of the advantage. All right. 